We have been promising you the moon for the past 46 minutes, and now we're going to bring it to you. Lauren Grush is here with her foxnews.com exclusive. Uh, something called Morpheus, the first vehicle on the moon since Apollo? Yeah, can you believe it? It's been about 40 years since we've been to back since we went to the moon in the first place, and a group of scientists at NASA are ready to take us back. And so they've created this full-functioning lunar lander called Morpheus, and it's really neat. They're testing it on site at Johnson Space Center in May, and it's really the first time in many years that a bunch of engineers at NASA have built a vehicle since the shuttle. Now, this is going to be a vehicle that can carry people, or it is one of these unmanned vehicles? Right now, it, it can't carry people, but it's, it's meant to test lunar lander technology, so they're hoping to eventually create a bigger version that will be able to take people to the moon. Now, this is uh, in, the, in the wake of a lot of budget cuts at NASA. Exactly. And so um, what's really great about this is that they've been able to uh, shorten the price tag on it by doing a partnership with a private company called Armadillo Aerospace. And that's also what Obama has been promoting. He wants to do a collaboration between NASA and private companies, get it more commercial. And so that is just, this is just a great example of this because the design and the idea came from Armadillo and then NASA took it and kind of ran with it and created this Morpheus lunar lander. Now what's the, what's the time frame on this? When do they believe they can get it up to the moon? Well, there's no concrete time frame right now because they still, it's still in the very early stages. But the great thing about this is that since they used Armadillo and since they're collaborating with these private companies, the time scale is going to be super short. Uh, there's talks now of going to Mars in maybe 2040. I don't know about you, but that's, that's so long for me. I, I kind of want it to happen now. And so what will be great about this is that they can, they can eventually have, you know, spacecrafts going to the, the moon in, in the next 10 years. So this is, the, what, what is the, the point of the mission? What do, they want to, what do they want to achieve and prove through doing this? Well, right now they want to show off what the, the lander can do, and, and it has some kind of cool techniques to it. It's testing this new technology called hazardous avoidance, and kind of like in Terminator, it can, it can scan <laughs> the surrounding areas and adjust its trajectory based on, uh, you know, hazardous material in the area. And it also tests a new kind of propulsion system called liquid methane. And what's really neat about that is um, there's, it's been shown that there is water on the moon in craters. And with this new propulsion system, they can take that water and eventually create their own fuel when they get to the moon. So you don't have to take all of your fuel with you. You can go there, create fuel, and then return with it. So it, te wow. it tests these kinds of technologies. And it also shows that, you know... <sighs> It's time for a new project to come about at NASA. You know, there's once the shuttle program ends, there's really not much going on. And this will be their kind of, you know, ploy to get us back out there. What do you think, Bob? The, the, the cuts that NASA has gone through, the ending of the shuttle program, a lot of discontent among those who work there. But they feel they're being made a little less relevant. But is, is President Obama right to, as Lauren points out, kind of promote this private public partnership? It's absolutely the right thing to do because these these things typically do generate very useful technologies that we put in other places. It's not really uh, necessary anymore for the government to, to spend all of the money. There are actually there's SpaceX, there are several startups, mm -hmm. right, yeah. that are, that are in, uh, in the space, so to speak, uh, already. And so partnering with them is great. Um, the qu question I had, is this named after the Matrix character? Oh, I'm not sure where the name came from. It's actually, it's actually derived. You're so much hipper than us. <laughs> it's actually derived from an earlier project that they started called Project M, which was uh, an initiative to get the Robonaut 2 to the moon in a thousand days. I, I just can't, what I'm what I'm looking forward to is the somebody in the bureaucracy is going to wake up and go, "Oh my God, we can sell sponsorship rights." <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be such a bad They'll idea. Yeah, can you imagine? Now, are they looking it. at a lot more of these kind of partnerships? I mean, I think what they're trying to do with this is show how lucrative this partnership was. So, yes, I think they do want to do more partnerships because, like I said, it shortens the time scale and it brings down the price tag a whole heck of a lot. What's in it for the private companies in this situation, Bob? I mean, they're, they're getting money from NASA, one assumes. Uh, but yeah, uh, well, and they're, they're getting a lot of launch technology. That's the expensive and really hard to replicate part. So, that, so they can put some very, very advanced electronics onto this thing and test them and see how they work, but they don't have to build the launch pad and, exactly. and fuel the rockets. One thing that um, Neil Melbourne, the vice president at Armadillo Aerospace, told me 
was that what they can do is kind of take the load off of NASA. They can launch these rockets into lower Earth orbit, and then NASA can focus on the grander schemes of things, like once, once you get out into space, then where do you go from there, you know, docking with the, the ISS or, you know getting into that lower Now, does somebody in the administration actually have to sign off on this going as far as launch? Yes. Um, that's up to Holdren's office, Science and Technology Advisor, and uh, they're hoping to kind of show with this test, which is going on in May, you know, what they're capable of. And so eventually, yes, it'll have to be approved, but they're kind of doing everything that they can to show how great of an enterprise this has been. How important do you think it is, uh, Bob, in this? I mean, the, the president talked about, uh, you know, continuing space exploration and what it does for us. How important do you think it is that we retain the position as the leaders in exploration of space? I, I think it's very important for the reasons we just said. It generates all sorts of important new technologies. When you're trying to solve new problems, you get new answers. And a lot of times those new answers are very relevant to other things that are happening. I mean, don't forget, the, the Internet itself came out of, uh, out of a Department of Defense initiative. Uh, and so... to oh, me, Al Gore's mind. Well, <laughs> it depends on which account you believe, but <laughs> I'm going with the military. <laughs> uh, and so... I, I think it's really very important, and it's very important to do it in a cost-effective, pro-business sort of way. This is great. It combines the kind of the best of America. Real innovation, real leadership, real pioneering spirit, but a commercial uh, side of it as well. And, Lauren, how, how excited are the people at NASA that you spoke to about this? Oh, I... I mean, it's, it's really inspiring to hear how giddy they are to talk about it. They really, I mean, this is what they've signed up to do. I mean, when you work for the space program, it's obviously something very close to your heart because, you know, these people have grown up watching Neil Armstrong, you know, and Buzz Aldrin walk on the moon. So the fact that they get to work on something that kind of replicates that, you know, great experience is really important to them. And, and I think it's, it'll be important for us, too, because it'll inspire a generation of you know, future scientists, future, future astronauts, and future engineers. Yes, so. you would be firmly in the middle of Generation Y. <laughs> and Lauren Grush is no slacker, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great story. It's an exclusive at foxnews.com. Thanks for bringing it to us today, Thank Lauren. Thank you so much. And